Here's how to make two parts that twist together and snap into place. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this twist lock mechanism. If you've gotten some questions about it, so this is going to be the Q&A for this week. So this is something that I showed in a short form video content uh, a while back and went through it relatively quickly and some people had issues following it and hopefully this time it'll be a little more clear. And you know, the, the point of this is if you have a threaded part, you know, it depends on how tight you twist something so sometimes stuff like this wouldn't align and in this case hopefully whatever design you have the thing will align correctly so i'm just going to demonstrate it with this design again so i'm going to go ahead and create uh two components so the first one is going to be like the top piece and i'm going to make another component here create new component bottom and doesn't really matter uh, which way you do it uh so let's go ahead and start with the top and I'm going to start off just making some circles. So here, let's make this 60. And then I think I'm just going to basically make the same thing that I did last time. So just to make sure that I don't mess anything up here. And just to be transparent, it took a lot of trial and error to get everything the way that it ended up being. So um, this is something that I didn't you know, just happen to, to come up with overnight. It, it took a lot of different iterations to get it to this point and so basically what i'm making here is this is the outer part of the design and this is going to be the the rim part that goes into the other part and then out here we're going to have the little tabs that basically lock everything in place and then just to make things clear as far as what's going on i'm just going to make these little patterns here on the outside just to kind of showcase that things lock together correctly and I'm going to make this horizontal vertical. And so everything is fully constrained. Okay. And so the first thing I'm going to do, if this is the top, I'll just extrude this up here. Let's see, I think I did like five. Actually, I'm not going to extrude this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do 10 millimeters there. I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. I can go back and try to make this seamless as possible for you guys. So just going to make that and then create the pattern here, circular pattern. And I'm going to select that feature and then pattern it around here and make, I don't know, like, it doesn't really matter how many you make. And I think I actually made them a little bit larger last time, but I think you get the point. So here is the main part. And so now I'm just going to extrude this out five millimeters on this side, like that. And so this is, if you think about it, kind of the part that inserts into the other part. So hopefully that is pretty clear. And then I'm going to go ahead and just make the main part of the bottom now just since we're we're already here. So I'm just going to extrude this wall here. 10 millimeters, so they'll be the same. And then I'm going to just go ahead and make a sketch here. You could do this a lot of different ways, but again, this is just one way to do it. Go negative five, so now that's covered up. And then I'm going to extrude this to here. And then create another pattern of that feature, which we just made. And then it automatically matches. Okay. So now we kind of have the two sides. I'm just going to make one a different color. And then let's just make this some other color as well. I don't know what color it goes. Go with that. Let's do something like that. Okay. So here we are. We have the the two the two pieces, right? So hopefully that's pretty straightforward so far. So the next thing that I'm going to do for this part is I'm going to reselect the top part, and then we're going to go ahead and hide that sketch, and I'm going to make a tab here on the side. And so it's always important to think about how you're going to print this. So we're going to print it like this, right? It doesn't really make sense to print it this way. And so if we're going to print it like this and we have a tab, we're going to have to have a chamfer or you're going to need supports, right? So that's part of why the original design was the way that it was. So uh, we're going to look at it upside down because that's how we're going to print it. And then I'm just going to select that uh, XZ face. And now I'm going to project this edge here. 
And so now you can see I have this line and I'm just going to use L for line and make this little profile that I'm going to revolve in a circle. So I'm going to go three millimeters here and then down one millimeter. I'll dimension that in a second and then over this way. And then I'll just go ahead and connect it. And so this is one millimeter. And then I can just dimension this to be 45. And you can really make this whatever angle you want. But uh, I like making it 45. And then that's three millimeters. And then just make sure that this is horizontal vertical. And so everything is fully constrained. And so the reason I did this, again, one is so that this can be printed without support. So we have the chamfer. And then I always like to, instead of making it, you know, chamfer like this, uh, that tip, if you if you did it like that, you know, you could make a 45 uh, like this pretty easily. If you did it like that, this tip here has basically no filament, so it always looks kind of bad. So always try to give it about a millimeter or so of just straight up plastic, which tends to make the print come out a little bit better. So that is our first sketch, and just make it visible again. So there it is. And so now we're just going to revolve this some portion of a revolve, not a full revolve. So it automatically selects that because the note is a profile, but if it, you know, if it didn't select it, just click revolve, make sure that's selected. And then the axis obviously is this axis. And so it's going to default to 360 degree revolve, but we don't need that much. So I ended up going with a lot less than that. Uh, let's see. There we go. So I can't remember exactly. I think I did like 20 degrees or so. That looks about what I about like what I did. So just remember how much you did because it's going to be important later. So 20 degrees and then click OK. And so now we have this little tab. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to make like a little notch in the tab. And the reason for this is this is how we're going to get the snap in effect because this tab here, there's going to be a notch in it. So I'm going to make a circle here in the midpoint. And I made mine just one millimeter. This is something that you might have to play around with depending on your print technique and your tolerances, but this is something that you can adjust later. So I'm just going to extrude this out uh, just to this surface. I'm just going to select the whole thing. It doesn't really matter. And so now we have that little cutout. And so now the next thing I'm going to do is add a fillet. So I'm just going to create the fillet here. And this is just kind of to make things slide a little bit better and so that it can kind of come in and out a little bit easier. And just remember kind of what you use here. So I'm going to use in one millimeter just to keep things simple and just use that on, on all the different parts. So that is the tab piece. And so now all we have to do next is just pattern this uh, in a circle. So create pattern, circular pattern, and I'm going to select that, that, and that. So those are our three features. That's the revolve, that's the cutout we did of the circle, and then that's the fillet that we just added. And so I'm just going to do four uh, total. So yeah, so four here, and then click OK. And so now we have our four little cutouts there. And so this can print pretty easily you know, fairly straightforward. You put this on the bottom and then print it off. Okay, so now we have to go and do the same thing for the bottom piece. So let's make that active. And so now everything is this way. And so there's a couple of different ways to, to think about this. Uh, I like to just bring up the other sketch that I did. So here is the old sketch. And now we can basically just use that uh, to, to at least start off with. So I'm actually just going to project that though, because I, I want to do a little bit, a little something different to it. So I'm going to create a new sketch kind of on top of that one. So select that same face that we use for that. And I'm just going to click P for project and then just project that same uh, profile that we did last time and click OK. And so then we can come back and hide that. And so now we have our profile there. And now uh, I actually want to connect this with the top because we're part of this is going to have to be open to get our, our piece in position. So I'm going to click R for rectangle and then just select this corner and then come up here kind of off the edge. And then I'm going to project with P this edge and click OK. And so now I can make these join together. So coincident that with that. And so now we have this profile that we can use. So finish sketch. Okay, and so if we think back to our first uh, little slot we made, we revolved it 20 degrees. So let's go ahead and just cut out that 20 degree slot. So create, revolve, 
is here and then select that and then our axis is here and then we want that to be just 20 degrees so this is going to be our slot so click ok but the issue with that is it's not going to get into the slot so then we can go ahead and come back to bring that same sketch back up okay so now we have our our slot here and if we bring our other piece back i know it's hard to see but that piece is sitting you know inside of that so uh that's kind of what we want right but to get down in there you know you have to line things up and then slide it in so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use this this full profile to cut this out so we're going to revolve again and we're going to select here and here and then our axis is going to be here again and then to get the part to fit into the into this uh slot it has to be at least 20 degrees but i'm going to go ahead and do like 30 or let's just do 25. So that gives you a little bit of play so that it'll kind of fit down in there a little bit easier. So now we can just revolve. Actually, let's go ahead and just add a little, a couple more features. So now we need to add a part where our slot will kind of snap into place, right? So we're going to create sketch and then go up here. And then we're just going to project uh, that out. And specifically, I really just want this edge. So let's project and just project this line and then that back line and click OK. And so if you remember, we put this in the middle of our part. So as long as we can find that midpoint like that, then we should be good to go. And so we're going to add a one millimeter in diameter column here. And so now we want to extrude the circle we just did down this way and we want to do join because we're making a column and then we want the distance to be to object and just select that and click OK. And so now we have a part that'll come down and then slot over. And then the last thing I like to do here is I want to go ahead and add a little bit of tolerance here. So if you click Q, that's press pull and then we can push on this by like negative 0.1 or so or negative 0.2 so this is something you're going to have to play around with to see what works for you uh, i think negative 0.1 usually works okay but you can also try negative 0.2 if you're if you're worried about it not fitting very well and this is again another way to kind of play with the tolerances so you can choose to not select the cylinder so if you select the cylinder it's going to get a little i guess slack in it so i would probably not select the cylinder and just select the wall so that it ha doesn't have a lot of friction but then once it gets into that slot it kind of sits there like you want it hey guys so i was watching the video back and realized that this push pull step here that i forgot an important thing and that is that you need to select this outer perimeter wall as well for the press pull and what that's doing is giving you a little bit of space between this piece and the other piece. It's going to sit like down in there. And if you didn't do that, it'd probably be too tight to, to kind of slide into place. So I just wanted to make that correction. And everything else in this uh, should be accurate, but just want to make sure I corrected that. So just click OK here and then continue with the video. Thanks. And so then the last step would be to add the fillets here. So remember all these were one millimeter. If you think back to what we did to the a slot there so i'm just going to do the same thing here to make everything kind of congruent so all these are one millimeter and so that all looks pretty good to me click ok and so now we just need to pattern that so create pattern circular pattern so we're going to do that uh we actually might have to go back and change that we'll see if it works and then four okay so the big things here are just to realize that you have to have an opening and then you have the slot sit down in there. So hopefully this makes sense. And then I'm going to bring back the full picture here and I'm just going to add some chamfers on the top. I think I did that last time. Make it look a little bit better. Okay. So that is how this works. And then I'm going to try to give you a good view of it. So section analysis, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this original slide. It's, it's the same mechanism. I just made a little bit different size parts. But I have the joints done for this one. So if you see here, it's it's all the same, basically. Um, 
the way it works again is is the same mechanism, right? So if you can see it, I'm going to try to do a section analysis here so that it makes more sense. Um, when this comes up, remember we're looking through the bottom of it, come up through here, right? So your slot goes up and then you turn it and it pops into place. So if you want to adjust things, you would adjust it here uh, with the push-pull, and then you can also adjust that uh, fillet there. So it comes into the part, and then it rotates, and then it snaps into place. So snap, and then unsnaps. Snap, unsnap. So hopefully that makes sense. I know it's uh, not a perfect illustration, but... Uh, that is how it works. Oh, and then the last thing I forgot to do on this one that we need to do is add the small fillets there. So let's go back and do that really quickly. So when I was adding fillets, I forgot to add them to this. And that just makes it to where the part kind of glides on better. If you don't add that, it'll uh, be a little bit more difficult to pop in and out. And I'm sure some people will say, oh, it's plastic. This is going to break. But um, most plastic will break at some point. So I still think it is a pretty effective design. And click OK. And then just change your uh, sh your pattern here to select. Make sure the fill is still selected. And then you should see that at all the little columns there. So that is how you make a snap-in uh, kind of twist-to-lock mechanism. And again, the big kind of important aspect of this is that your parts should line up. So regardless of what your design is, if you have something where you want the two pieces to align, this should work. 